Okay, so as you saw in our first whipped soap no base recipe, then you know that you can easily make a very nice whipped soap without using a pre-made base. It's soft and fluffy and lovely to use, but we can improve on it by making some additions. Uh, whilst the first base recipe gave you a starting point as a whipped soap cleanser, this recipe adds some moisturising and moisture retaining ingredients to benefit the skin and give the product an overall nicer feel. Adding glycerin as a humectant will enhance the skin feel and benefits of using the product, as will the addition of an oil. I've kept the percentages of ingredients at a point whereby the finished product is a lovely whipped cream consistency. I've also made it as a half and half recipe, meaning that each colour is a different fragrance. This is within the allowed fragrance limit. You can also add sugar at the end and recalculate your percentages for a lovely sugar scrub formula. You can add as much sugar as you like without affecting the foaming abilities as it's an exfoliating ingredient and not a dilutant, uh, though I wouldn't go overboard as it won't be pleasant to use. Um, this recipe is fairly simple and allows you to make a consistently good product time after time that you can customise the way you want. It's an aqueous formula, meaning that you need a preservative. You can use the one that we've suggested here or your own preference, but make sure that it's broad spectrum. Um, Average shelf life will be about six to 12 months, but you need to perform your own stability testing. On with the formula. So first of all, we have 15% or 30 grams of sodium cocyl isothionate or SCI. This is your anionic surfactant with great cleansing and foaming abilities. Um, the powder is easier to work with than the noodles. Make sure you're wearing a respirator because you do not want to breathe this in. Then we have 15% or 30 grams of cocamide propyl betaine. And this is your amphoteric surfactant, which works exceptionally well with SCI to reduce irritation and enhance the foaming texture of the final product. Then in phase B, you have 44% or 88 grams of distilled water as a hydrating base ingredient. Then 5% or 10 grams of vegetable glycerin, which is your humectant. And then 1% or 2 grams of banana fruit powder. This is good for smoothing and moisturising dry skin. It's rich in magnesium, potassium and antioxidants A, C and E. It takes a bit of agitating to fully incorporate into the mixture when heated, so be patient with it. Then in phase C, we've got 8% or 16 grams of steric acid used to thicken the product, act as an emulsifier and soften the skin and help it to retain moisture. Then because we're adding oils, obviously oil and water don't mix unless you have an emulsifier. So we're adding 3% or 6 grams of emulsifying wax, which will be our emulsifier and a hardener. This doesn't mean it will make the product go hard, it simply means that it will thicken it up a little bit and give it some texture. Then lastly in phase C we're using 5% or 10 grams of banana infused sunflower oil. Again this is a moisturiser and of course it goes with our tropical theme. On to phase D, because we're doing half and half we're adding these before we add the colour and the fragrance. So we have 1% or 2 grams of phenoxyethanol EHG, which is a broad spectrum preservative that's easy to work with and very commonly used in products such as this. Then because we're adding oils, I like to add vitamin E, 0.5% or 1 gram as an antioxidant. Now in phase E, because we're adding them last, we have our mica pigment um, or neon pigment. Um, I'm using two different colours um, and I'm using 0.5% total, possibly a bit under. Um, you don't want to stain yourself or your customers, so use up to this amount. Um, you don't have to use the full amount. And then our fragrance oils, because I'm doing half and half, I've got 2% or 4 grams total which is 1% banana and 1% mango, which is two grams of each. And I'm matching the mango to the orange and the banana to the yellow pigment. Okay, so if you take your SCI and add your cocomidopropyl betaine to the SCI and stir very, very gently while wearing your respirator, you do not want to breathe this in. One, it stinks, and two, it's not very good for you. 
so just mix that together until you get sort of a nice silky sort of thick creamy texture like so Put that to one side and then take your distilled water and add your glycerin and your banana fruit extract. You will see this clump and it won't disperse itself at the moment but that's fine. You'll just agitate it while it's heating and it should all mix in. I said extract, I meant powder, um, you know that. Now take your steric acid and add your emulsifying wax and your banana infused sunflower oil or you can use another oil if you prefer and these are all your phases to be heated we have your steric acid emulsifying wax and oils your banana glycerin and distilled and your surfactants heat those until the steric acid and emulsifying wax have melted and everything else is heated to the same temperature and then you can take that off the heat Add your phase B water ingredients to your phase C steric acid emulsifying wax ingredients and stir. And then you can add your surfactants to that, give it a stir and then whip it up for the first time. You should now have a sort of lotion jelly like texture and um, that's absolutely fine you now need to leave this to cool to 40 degrees C before adding your preservative and your vitamin E Give it a quick stir and then whip that in thoroughly so it's completely combined and then what we're going to do is separate it out into two different beakers because we want our two different scents and two different colours. Once you've got half in one beaker, half in another, uh, weigh it just to check they're the same because you are adding fragrance oil at a certain percentage and add one fragrance with one colour to one and the other fragrance with the other colour to the other and then whip up each one um, until it's thoroughly combined. I always like to go in with a spatula afterwards just to make sure I've got all the product off the sides and that any pigment on the bottom is just thoroughly combined in. We will be whipping this again later. Um, and then you just need to leave them really. Um, anything from four hours to overnight and you will see the texture change when you next whip it up.
Right, so this is next day. This has been left overnight. Um, the texture has changed. It's sort of more together, less jelly-like, um, and more like whipped cream once you whip it. If you want a written version of this recipe, then look below in the description where it's linked to a blog on our website where it'll all be written out uh, with further information for you. So now we're going to fill our jar. Um, I'm only done a 20, uh, 200 gram batch, um, so it'll only fill one jar, but that's fine. We don't want to waste product. Um, and I'm just going to basically dollop it in because I can't be bothered to get a pipe, piping bag out um, and there's too little really to pipe properly. It will end up being one of those bad piping videos again. Um, so uh, just dollop it in. I like to alternate it because you get a nice effect in the jar. Um, and then just tap it to uh, get the air out and let it settle. The great thing about making your own whip soap is that you're not beholden to these bases that can change so dramatically in texture with each batch. This will be consistent every time you make it so long as you follow your recipe. Um, and just remember you can change up things. I, I added uh, sunflower oil with banana. You don't have to add that. You could add, a, add sweet almond oil if you want. You don't have to add the banana powder. You could add kaolin, you could add arrowroot. Um, choose what you want to add to your product. Um, you can even add shea butter in the oil phase if you want. Um, just uh, be mindful of your ingredients and how they interact together. I suggest looking them up online and reading up about them before you use them so that you know why you're using them and what they're likely to do in different percentages when combined together. And look at that effect you get by just chucking it in the jar, arguably nicer than when you pipe it. So there you go. Don't forget to label it, give it a batch number and record that somewhere because you want to know when you made it and what batch it is, if, especially if you're selling it to people. Um, make sure you perform a stability test though before you do that and get a CPSR if you're in the UK. So you should probably try this out now just to prove that it does foam. So here we go, our trusty bowl test. Um, you can see how lovely and creamy that is. You don't get that with bases, you just don't. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you end up making it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss my next videos. Uh, if you want more videos, exclusive content and access to one-to-one -to -one small business mentoring, um, that's something I do as well. Um, just click the link for my Patreon below and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>